So thanks, Amasar, for, for inviting me. So, uh, so the project I'm, I'm going to describe is utilizing online social media during disasters. So it's basically not exactly during disasters only, but there is a phase before the disaster and phases during a disaster, let's say. So uh, you know, disasters are unfortunately happening almost every year, everywhere in the world. And over the last couple of years, we have spoken to various NGOs, victims, government organizations who work in these areas. And so we have, so what problems do these people face? So we have seen kinds of two kinds of problems. So one is when a disaster occurs, like an earthquake or a flood or an epidemic spreading or even a terrorist attack. First, there is huge confusion. So there is no situational information, what is called, and there is no coordination in the relief efforts. For example, some of the NGOs told us that often enough resources reach the place, but then no one knows where, what is needed where. So often things get stagnated in airports or railway stations. And also there is often no plan or no preparedness. So then we asked them, how can a computer scientist help? So first they said, we need automated systems during these times, because often human beings are incapacitated. So even the people who are in, so the medical, so the doctors who are in that area, even they have casualties. Like the Nepal earthquake in 2015, it said that 60% of the local medical personnel were affected. So they were of no use. So since the human beings are not being able to function, we need automatic systems which won't be afraid or be, still be functional. And also, they said that we need to learn from prior events, that, that how can one be prepared during these, uh, during these disasters. So we have started proposing the use of online social media as a source of information. So as you understand, so we have talked about different kinds of sensors today. So here, the, in case of social media, it's the people being used as social sensors. So nowadays with the ubiquity of say, smartphones and mobile internet, people who are in the area can often post important information. Now, of course, there are benefits and limitations of using social media. So benefits would be, as I told you, there is a lot of information available from the ground zero. And this information is real time. So during a, when there is a disaster happening, many people are tweeting or posting on Facebook from that area itself. And also, these are archived, as in Twitter or Facebook, they, they stored these information. So if you can actually learn from prior events, what was, what was the situation during prior events, maybe you can use that during a future event for preparedness. However, there are enough limitations. For example, millions of posts are made in a social media during a disaster. But we have found less than 2 or 3% are actually relevant for the relief efforts. So it's a challenge to actually figure out which posts should be useful. And also, there are rumors, fake news, and bias in social media. For example, it's a common complaint that social media, whatever information you get from social media, would be biased towards rich people with smartphones or younger people. So these kind of uh, issues are there. So, uh, so these are challenges which we have to guard against. So I'll just talk about two of our projects. The first one would be for like, utilizing OSM for pre-disaster preparedness. So in this project, so, so we teamed up with an NGO. It's called Doctors for You, based in Mumbai. So this NGO sends uh, doctors or medical professionals to areas which are affected by disasters. So one of their teams were working during the, the Nepal earthquake in 2015. And they kindly shared with us a large set of WhatsApp messages, which this team exchanged among themselves. So while studying these messages, we were sure about that these were posted by trusted medical people in that area. So we did not have to worry about uh, fake news, rumors, and this kind of stuff. And so we found, so we analyzing this data, we found real good information on what kind of medical resources or human resources would be necessary in the aftermath of an earthquake. So uh, just to give you a summary, so as we saw that during an earthquake, there are these different phases. So use, utilizing terminology from the US government, there are these names called heroic phase, which is the first week, honeymoon phase, which is the next three weeks, then disillusionment phase, and so on. So as you see, the, uh, the issues, the main issues keep changing. So the first week, it's the, to treat people with injuries and the trauma. But the second week, or the next few weeks, it's mainly about water contamination and pregnant women and children. And then come insect-borne diseases and so on, because people are out there in the open. Now the homes have collapsed. So now insect-borne diseases, water contamination, these become the main issues. And as you see, the medical requirements and human resource requirements change with time. 
so 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 we so we so we published this work on in so both communities in the the disaster risk reduction community as well as a medical journal the disaster medicine and public health preparedness so so we were trying to say that if at least say the medicines which are needed in the heroic phase the first week if they can be kept in stock in earthquake prone regions maybe the first week would be useful i mean those medicines can immediately be made available so this is about utilizing social media for pre i mean pre disaster preparedness the next project is on utilizing social media for post disaster relief so this is the work we started at the microsoft research workshop in this summer so thanks msr for the support so so we so this was a work we did on twitter so when there is a disaster many kinds of tweets are posted we specifically found there are two very useful categories of tweets first there are tweets which actually talk about what is needed for example the first tweet is from this chennai floods so you can see an address where drinking water is needed the second is from the nepal earthquake so blood donors are needed so these are the needs and similarly so during these disasters even before the government people or ngos come in the local people there form the first line of uh, like defense so the so there are many people who want to help so they also start posting about availabilities so you see someone in chennai has drinking water in stock so this person wants to help or there is this blood donor society in nepal so the project we were doing is to automatically figure out these kind of tweets and then automatically match them so we can actually build a system to show people that okay if if these people are drinking need drinking water whereas drinking water is available nearby we can maybe couple them up now as i said so so in in datasets containing hundreds of thousands of tweets we found only few hundreds of such posts so extracting such information is itself a challenge and there are other challenge i mean that's mainly challenging because you know social media vocabulary is very noisy <coughs> with no one follows grammatical rules or this kind of stuff and then also when something happens in places like india as professor ragi was saying things are multilingual so people use hindi english code mixing which is the same post containing both languages so these kind of uh, challenges are there and also it's multimodal input so people are posting images and text and so on so uh, so we are using neural network or deep learning models with some success so they are performing well but then there are issues for example these models usually take lot of data to train so how and they take time to train also so there is no point designing a model which takes maybe 6 hours to train because then you will be only able to deploy it after 6 after 6 hours and as uh, so as we heard in the last presentation we so natural thing would be can we train models on prior events and use them on future events we tried that it was it's difficult for example uh, there is a group in qatar computing research institute which have, has been doing work on disasters for a long time they have recently released just like google uh, uh, large set of i mean word embeddings trained on different kinds of disaster data so we use them but again when a new thing happens the vocabulary is so different that these pre trained models usually are not very useful so so those challenges remain also there are other open challenges as i said so a common complaint about social media is that there is no fact checking as in there is lot of rumors fake news and bias so we need to talk uh, so we need to check for those for example <coughs> just as i said so if we know that there are some doctors in the region maybe we can use them for some verified information and then tackle these things also so while working on this we have have more or less understood that automated systems won't be able to solve every problem for example there are people who talk about that drinking water is needed but then they forget to mention where so no amount of deep learning etc will help to solve us we'll have to do interactive crowdsourcing as in we want to design a system which will actually go back and ask that where are you so these kind of things we are thinking about uh, also i'll just end that uh, so so this this presentation has been on disasters but i also use as you know social media is for social sensors so some of the other projects we are doing is on building or improving city infrastructure for example in the last 3 years there have been three big floods in indian cities twice in chennai once in mumbai so can we observe something commonalities and can we tell the city people that these are the areas which are likely to get flooded right so these things also we are tackling so thanks once again thank you so any question any quick question while the next speaker
How much is uh, social media accessible to the people? Good question. So actually, we had we had asked this specific question in Chennai. So, th so there's a mixed answer. Some people say, yeah, we didn't have any Wi-Fi connectivity, therefore social media is not accessible. But there were other people who said that, oh, you know, Facebook and Twitter were the things accessible. We were not even able to phone anyone because all the cellular lines seem to be congested, but Wi-Fi was still available. No, I mean that the uh, the the communication in infrastructure. Uh, if, uh, what is the situation that are those also affected by yes sure some, uh, some disasters do affect them for example earthquakes can affect in you know tower, towers failing or those kind of things whereas maybe a disease spreading or a terrorist attack won't have that kind of effect so it depends upon the geography as well as uh, what has happened and is it possible to temporarily if the uh, communication infrastructure is affected to temporarily install yes this, uh, so I personally don't exactly. So I personally don't work in that field, but there are people who are starting to work. For example, Sandeep does some work on. So there, there are people who have tried to set up drones or you know drones which will fly over an area or like balloons or quickly set up some kind of Wi-Fi. So that's also there's a lot of research going on over that. Plus a lot for the mobile operators generally they also have these sort of redundancy plans. And for example, the IT group sort of a strong proponent of having for disaster situations. So measures on sort of how quickly you can have a network up and running, running out there. So there are that whole series of actions on that front and for infrastructure resilience.